Hi, I just, uh, it just occurred to me that the chromatogram itself might be a little confusing to some people. Uh, those of you who forgot about uh, um, integration and the NMR peaks and that sort of thing. So let me make a couple of connections for you, okay? So the chromatogram that you're going to see is going to have three peaks in this particular experiment. And each peak um, has a height uh, on the y-axis. Sorry about that. Each peak has a height here, this peak height. The y-axis in this experiment is AU, absorbance units. These are the same absorbance units that you got from the spectrophotometer and when you did the Bradford assay. They are those absorbance units. Those absorbance units are not interchangeable between different people and different experiments and different machines. Every machine will give you a different number of absorbance units. That is why we use a calibration curve to calculate the concentration of the stuff. Right now, um, the absorbance you, the more absorbance you have, in other words, the higher the peak is, the more stuff you have. You know, the more concent the, the the more concentrated this particular component is in your in your sample mixture. All right. So if the if if the peak is higher, then you got more stuff in there. Right now, also, if the peak is broader, um, you. You, you also have more stuff in there because the, the, the amount of stuff that you have in there is given by a calculation that involves peak height and also involves peak width. Now, this is confusing because we also use peak width to uh, determine the, the, to determine the, um, the uh, plate numbers, the numbers of theoretical plates. Right, so if the peak is very wide, that's not good. Uh, that means your column is not the right column to, to be using. So that we, we want the peak to be as narrow as possible. Right? When the peak is as narrow as you can get it, the peak width is used in a calculation by the computer, not by you, but by the computer, along with the peak height to calculate the amount, the chemical amount of stuff you have in this, represented by this peak. And you can convert that to moles. You can convert that to whatever. Uh, you, you you can even convert it to milligrams if you knew uh, if, if you knew the concentrations in um, milligrams per liter. I mean, if you did your calibration curve with milligrams per liter. But anyways, uh, the, the 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 amount of of this component in your sample is given by the area underneath this curve. Remember, area is length times width. But since this is a curve, we don't use the length times the width straight up because that would be a box. We use the integral of this curve. Now in, in math class you have used several different methods to uh, calculate integrals but the computer is using none of those methods. The computer is using an, an iterative a numerical method where it would try a number and then uh, put it into a math formula and try another number, put it into the math formula and it would keep on changing the number to 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 make its answers that it's getting over and over again closer and closer to each other. When it has two answers that are close enough to each other to be virtually the same, it chooses that as the answer. And, and that is how it is calculating the integral of this curve. So when they say integration in the in the software for this for this uh, lab work, what the, that's what they're talking about. I'm talking about the c computer numerical calculation of the area of this curve which gives you the chemical amount the, the, the amount of this chemical um, that this peak represents, okay? Now, um, more on the y-axis, the absorbance units. The chromatography machine has a detector. Um, let me get the uh, principles. I, I want to get a, a, another picture of the detector here. Um, preparation, high performance, there we have the other regular. Uh, oh yeah, so, one of these one of these boxes in this stack is the detector you know uh, you will see the detector and you will point to it in the in the lab work but uh, one of these boxes is the detector the columns in there one of these and the detector did, the detector is basically in in our case just a spectrophotometer very similar to the spectrophotometer that you use in the Bradford assay however this spectrophotometer, I'm not sure which box it is, but the spectrophotometer here does not require you to put a cuvette in there. Instead, it shoots its light at a transparent tube that is running through it, and that tube contains your sample getting pushed through at high pressure. And uh, as time goes by, it just keeps on recording the absorbance. And that is where the chromatogram comes from. 
this peak is the absorbance of the of your sample as it gets pushed through um, after after it, it comes out of the column it's all separated into its different components and then the absorbance is high when something passes through that the, the light in the detector and there's no absorbance when it's just pure solvent passing through the 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 detector the light in the detector okay so that is what is going on just spectrophotometry nothing else now there are more sophisticated hplc apparatuses that you may encounter in your working life later where they connect a mass spec to the hplc as a detector instead of uh instead of a spectrophotometer or they may connect some other um detection machine i think I'm not sure if they still do this, but when I was in the school, they there used to be HPLC experiments connected to an NMR machine. So uh, th th there's all kinds of different detectors, but the most common, and I think the cheapest, is the UV-Vis, the special photometer detector. Okay. Now, some of you might be confused because we have also done uh, some questions in this virtual lab work using this calibration curve. And you know this calibration curve is the same curve that you made with the Bradford assay. Absorbance units on the um, y-axis and the uh, and the concentration on the x-axis. Yes, this is this is exactly the same thing, except instead of absorbance units on this y-axis, it's the peak area. And what they mean by the peak area is going back to this picture. The area under this curve, the integration under this curve, which 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 is a calculation of the chemical amount of that sample. All right. So, this this wait, where is it, is it here? Yes, yes. So this calibration curve. So this calibration curve is not done with uh, with your sample you do not use your sample to make this calibration curve like this calibration if you were to use your sample to make this calibration curve that would be just like the people who did who had to do the bradford assay several times because they kept on putting the unknown at different concentrations into the into their spectrophotometer in the bradford assay you know they that they diluted their unknown no 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 so the sample in 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 our experiment is like the unknown which it, which we'd use in the Bradford assay. The sample is the unknown. You do not use that for the calibration curve. So when they say calibration curve, they're not talking about the sample, the sample that you crush up with your motor and pestle and filter through the syringe in this lab work. And that's not what they're talking, that's not what they're talking about. The calibration curve, what they're talking about is you go to the chemical company and you buy pure methyl stearate, which is one of the components in the drug mixture. You buy pure povidone, which is one of the components in the drug mixture. You buy pure that other stuff, the active ingredient. I forgot what it was called. Totally forgot what that was called. Is it in here? Yeah, I, well, whatever the drug was, whatever the active ingredient was, you, you buy pure that, right? And then you make stock, stock uh, you, you, I mean, uh, you use that as your stock solution and you make dilution. So let's say we're doing this calibration curve for the actual active ingredient, right? So you, you buy pure active ingredient from some chemical company and you dilute that many times. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In this case, they, they made eight different dilutions. And then you put each of those through the, the HPLC machine by itself by itself as its own sample you do not mix them all together because that would defeat the purpose of of diluting them okay so you put uh your first dilution into the hplmc machine and you get a certain peak area you should only see one peak they're not going to show this i'm just explaining to you what the calibration curve means they're not going to show you this whole process of generating these points right so you put you put your first dilution of the pure active ingredient in the machine, and you get a peak. You, and you you ask to, the, the computer will automatically calculate the area under the peak for you by integration, numerical integration, and then you you graph this. The computer doesn't. Well, okay, the newer computers might graph this for you, but uh, when I was your age, the computer did not graph this for you. Uh, you did it yourself. So uh, you 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 get the peak area and you graph that in Microsoft Excel with the concentration that you know because you made a dilution. And then when you're done, 
you take your second sample, your second dilution of the same pure active ingredient. You put that through the machine. It takes a long time. It could take like 20 minutes. And then and then let that go through the machine. It gives it, it gives a peak, calculates the area under the peak for you, and you plot that on Microsoft Excel. Y is the is the integration, and X is the concentration that you know because you made the dilution. Your third dilution, you throw it through the machine, another 20 minutes. You, and a machine gives you peak area, and you give Microsoft Excel the 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 concentration because you made a dilution, and you keep on doing that, and that's how you get the calibration curve. All right, you're putting these these pure samples at different dilutions through the machine one at a time. Now the newer machines, uh, as you'll see in the in the beginning of this lab work, uh, they they have automated. They have automated uh, sample injection. So you just make all your dilutions, put it in a sample tray on the machine, and there's a robotic arm with a needle on it, and it just sucks up samples one after another. And you just leave it there for like an hour, go out for lunch, and you come back, it's all done. And then you have all the data you need to make your curve. So that is what the calibration curve is all about. Okay. Thank you. Bye. How do you stop the video again? Uh. Oh yeah.